So, welcome back. Now we will have a panel in English and um, I'm happy that all of you are back again in this room and thank you for all of you who are uh, at home watching uh, this conference. I hope you had a great time with uh, the panels and discussions in advance and now we will come to the point where we are talking um, about uh, practice and we will have a look into practice and how companies are actually shaping future how are companies implementing cradle to cradle and what do we need to do to actually scale cradle to cradle innovation so to discuss this i have the honor to have uh, four um, guests here with me on stage and I didn't have that for a long time so I'm also happy to be in this situation. Thank you uh, for coming here. Thomas Fuhr, Michael Kara, Anno Maki and uh, Wilhelm Maus. Thank you all of you for being here. To tell you a little bit more who's uh, with me on this stage, uh, I'm introducing um, my panelists for you in a brief, briefly. Um, Thomas Fuhr is, uh, has been co-CEO of Grohe since July 2019. Additionally, in different positions at other companies belonging to Grohe as well. And he's responsible for the research and development, production and supply chain um, for the fitting segment. And also Grohe launched um, a pro product as Cradle to Cradle certified variants in 2021 so they are in the cradle to cradle family for some uh, now as well prior, prior to grow he was vice president um, at mercedes-benz usa and also director of manufacturing and quality at the mclaren in the uk in 2019 he was awarded with the baum environmental prize um, also with me on stage, I have uh, Michael Kara. He is Senior Vice President, Sustainability and Environment, uh, also for Health and Safety at um, ZF Group, and this since 2021. And before that, he has worked in various leadership positions for supply chain management and localization project supply um, supplier management. Next to me, I also have um, uh, from France, Arnaud Maki. He is the Group Sustainability Officer at Taquette and he joined the flooring manufacturer Taquette uh, as Vice President Hard Flooring EMEA in July 2016. Previously, he has worked for more than 20 years at Arms strong uh, strong uh, group also next to me i have wilhelm maus he's managing director of lorenz gmbh and kkg and uh, he, yeah lorenz gmbh and kkg is a leading manufacturer of me measurement and pion pioneer of the circular economy they call themselves um, they are producing smart water meters of the Swabian family-owned company and enable the oper operation and monitoring of public supply networks and are used to control industrial plants. Yeah, we are here um, so with experts of uh, how uh, implementing sustainability in companies, also how to implement cradle to cradle in companies. And we are uh, at the beginning, we will have some short statements from each of our panelists to introduce themselves and their work on cradle to cradle. Um, Thomas Fu, would you like to start, please? Yes, thanks, Nora. Thanks for having me here and uh, having the opportunity uh, to talk with you. I enjoyed already the first session very much this morning and uh, had already my first learnings, which was one of the targets to, to be here. So uh, I'm representing uh, Grohe, the Grohe AG uh, today here. And uh, we have been, as a company, uh, 
sustainability basically in our DNA. And uh, it starts with the products. Our products are already from a design very long lasting. You know, everybody knows it. Bathrooms, 15 years, it's not a problem. Uh, and we have in, in our mother plan in HEMA uh, customers coming bringing us products after 20, 25 years for repair because they want to continue to use them and we are happy uh, doing this. And in this journey, we over the last couple of years, we implemented uh, a lot of new things as well. You know, we, we try to make our production CO2 neutral. Uh, we uh, started a big project in 2018 to get all plastic, single-use plastics out of our packaging. And I'm happy to announce that by December of this year, this will be also all gone. Uh, we have uh, already 32 million of plastic bags, single-use plastic bags, they are already gone, and the last 3 million um, will be gone by, by end of this uh, year. But <clears throat> there was one more thing, talking about cradle to cradle, our products to really see can we implement cradle to cradle also within faucets, within showers, uh, within buildings at the end. And uh, this was the task which our engineering team took on. And uh, I'm actually quite happy that uh, beginning of this year we could launch four different products where you can install basically your whole house now with cradle to cradle certified products, a shower, uh, something for the wash basin, for the kitchen, uh, and uh, a whole sortiment around it. And this is the drive, it's the start. Uh, I think we started the, the journey now, and I'm looking forward to get some impressions, uh, some good uh, uh, discussion today to learn, to drive this forward, because it's only the beginning. We need to do much more, we need to do much faster, uh, because uh, Without us as companies, as entrepreneurs, starting the race, uh, we will not finish it. So we really need to start it, we need to put our efforts in it, and uh, that's where we as GROW stand for. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so um, maybe uh, Anomaki, would you go next, uh, introducing yourself? Yes, please, and, and if we can uh, maybe uh, share uh, the slides that uh, yes. I prepared, it would be easier for people to, um, to follow. So if we can move directly to the third one, maybe. Yeah, maybe I give to you this one, then you can Thank you. actually do this yourself. Yeah, you should see there. So this one is to move forward. Very good. Mm -hmm. So yes, Tarket, Tarket is, uh, is an international, it's a French company, as you said. It's an international, uh, with an international footprint. We, we are a company of about 2.6 billion euros. We are making floors uh, and sports surfaces. We have more than 12,000 employees. And we sell uh, in more than 100 countries, uh, more than 1.3 million square meter of floors every day. Uh, we have, as I said, an international footprint with about 33, I mean, with 33 different plants uh, spread uh, all over the world, but also um, R&D centers and, as you can see, a recycling center as well. We, uh, as I said, we are making floors. Uh, in fact, uh, you, you are walking on, your on our floors most likely uh, very often uh, because these floors are used in, in your house, in your home, but also in hospitals, in healthcare, in, uh, in uh, workplaces, uh, in schools, so in education, and, and of course, as I said, uh, also in, in sports. We, uh, we know that uh, our floors are used uh, by people and that's the reason why uh, we, we have this concept of target human conscious design, uh, which is really our commitment to stand with present and future generation. Uh, we, we want to create floorings and sports surfaces that are good for people and also for the planet. And that's what we are going to talk about today. 
So this uh, commitment, target human conscious commitment, uh, is in fact uh, uh, based on three pillars. The first one, which is related to uh, really the understanding of, uh, of human being, of the needs. The second pillar uh, is uh, related to uh, people and planet, and that's what I'm going to develop today. And the third one, of course, is about interacting with all our st stakeholders, with our customers, of course, but also all the stakeholders, our suppliers and so on, to, uh, to develop our solutions and, and for, for a very long lasting application. Few words about, uh, I would say, the way we see the challenges ahead, ahead of us, I mean, today and ahead of us. I believe we can all agree on the fact that uh, uh, we have big challenge related to greenhouse gas emissions, so to climate, how to keep it below two degrees Celsius. Big challenge related to resources. We are going to talk about that uh, with circular economy today. But in our business, we have also a big challenge, uh, something which is very important for all of us, which is related to health and well-being. Because we spend more than 20, more than 90% of our time inside, and we have to make sure that the floors that we use uh, are, of course, healthy for people. And that's where cuddle to cuddle uh, is a very useful tool. I will come back on that. So I will, uh, will be happy to share our, our experience with you today, uh, because what, what we like with Cradle to Cradle is this uh, holistic approach, uh, which is not only covering uh, climate-related uh, topics, but also uh, the resource one and this healthy uh, part as well. We have been using, uh, it, it's been a journey, we have been using Cradle to Cradle methodology uh, for more than 10 years now. Uh, we have learned a lot of things, and I would be happy, happy to, uh, to share uh, all these learnings with you uh, today. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, next to me, I have uh, Michael Maus. Uh, would you go next? Yes, thank you. And I also would ask to present one slide. Yeah, we should see it in... Yeah, here we are. Um, I would like to summarize what we are doing, our business models, our ideas, our strategy in this slide. Uh, all with us, it's all about water meters, from very wa small water meters for flats up to big water meters uh, for water suppliers. And our principle is purchase the material once and use the meters several times. The more often, the better. With this approach, we are able to reduce our manufacturing costs, uh, especially when you look uh, at longer periods. And therefore, we are in the position to share these economical benefits with our customers. Therefore, I think it is important if we not only want to win those participants for our models who are convinced that it's necessary to, to do so. It's also important just to win normal businessmen because they see an economical advantage. And here we have these advantages combined with the advantages for the environment because we can reduce the emissions dramatically. And besides that, we are able to create jobs. We keep jobs and we create jobs. Therefore, uh, meanwhile, the company has grown by factor four uh, since we are doing so. And therefore, I think altogether, this is an important location factor for Europe. And I think this is the idea to protect Europe, to protect the environment, and to have an ongoing business for all involved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next one would be Michael Kara. Yes, thank you very much and thank you for having me here. Uh, I just have uh, one or two slides later on to illustrate something, so no need for slides now. Um, I'm representing ZF Friedrichshafen. ZF is uh, headquartered in Friedrichshafen, not too far from here and has over the last uh, years grown from a foundation-owned company to a still foundation-owned huge um, global group. We are all about mobility. 
We are producing chassis, driveline systems for the automotive and commercial vehicle industry. We are since several years also very active in the field of safety, airbag systems, camera systems in the direction of autonomous driving and are seeing a huge revolution at the moment concerning our whole business model, turning especially our automotive sector, turning into electrification. It was already mentioned in the panel before that this is a big trend that we are seeing and we are of course participating in this. And at the same time, we are also a manufacturer of industrial drives and we are seeing a big uh, 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 upward trend currently on our wind turbine drive lines. We are producing about 1 billion euros of sales with wind turbines per year and we are now in our sustainability strategy, which we are having since many, many years, we are now all about, and I like this, uh, what was mentioned by Mr. Stuchte in the meeting before, now it's really all about seriousness and about uh, scaling because we see now that without changing the whole business model, without changing the products, and especially without a big collaboration across our whole supply chain, we will not be able to handle the challenges that we set ourselves, but also that the regulation sets us. And um, reaching climate neutrality, net zero by 2040 is our committed goal, but this can only be reached with, for example, secondary material use and working towards cradle to cradle principles. That's we are, why we are also engaging in this area. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, so we hear there are four big players um, at this panel now. And actually, of course, we could ask, is this even possible? Is this transition we are all talking about, is this possible? Or are we just talking about an idea of becoming less bad and uh, actually changing? I mean, talking about the automotive uh, sector and we have lost a lot of time um, in changing the way we are actually producing our uh, products and changing how we are seeing mobility. Do you think it's still possible to change this and to actually come from a maybe neutral perspective also to a positive perspective? So reaching climate positivity is of course an even more challenging goal than reaching climate neutrality. And uh, uh, when we talk about what we want to reach, we want to reach it by technical means at CF, and uh, we want to be uh, reliable in what we do. That's everything that we want to do. We, um, we, we published our 2040 ambition of net zero last year, and this year we are now step by step rolling out our 2030 targets. Um, and with those targets, um, we have mandatory let's say, plans behind how we want to reach, for example, a certain amount of secondary material in all our products, how we want to um, uh, come to a 100% truly additive green power yeah, that we can supply with our own products as well. So I believe it's now is the time. I mean, the time is already since uh, two and a half years that the automotive industry has seen that we have this big transformation. Yeah? But now, and you also see it in the announcements today, I think uh, this is not many more about can we reach it, but how can we do it? Because if we are not able to reach it, many companies will be out of business. Yeah. And do you think it's possible to actually change your DNA there and actually yeah, bring these ideas into the uh, key factor of the company? We have always been a long-term thinking company because we are owned by the city of Riedershafen and do not have to present like every quarter to shareholders. So the long-term thinking has been in the company since a long time. Um, uh, however, what I believe is uh, uh, now different is that uh, we also have the, the means and we see that the surroundings change that enable us also to uh, integrate those strategies much better into the whole business models. For example, um, we have um, uh, what was a big, uh, let's say, um, uh, um, uh, not a wake-up call, but it was a big uh, uh, it evolvement for us is um, 
Um, normally, we are um, we have to refinance all our money ourselves because we are not on the stock market. But since we made some big purchases, we also have third-party investors. And we now realize that by uh, 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 giving out a green bond, we handed out a green bond just a few weeks ago, over 500 million, and we could only do this at good conditions because we were able to prove that um, we are expanding our wind business and we are going into the electrified. So what was mentioned in the panel before, this finance-driven perspective is also something we feel very strongly and where we see lots of new chances. Yeah, yeah changing DNA. Maybe we can come over to Taket because you said, okay, you already started your journey over 10 years ago. And as we heard your uh, CEO, he was talking about the rising star cradle to cradle in, in your company and actually changing your company with a roadmap to a cradle to cradle company. How would you, what, what would you say to this? Is this possible, this change? Uh, I would say, is it possible? Yes, it is. I believe uh, if we look at the past, uh, we can demonstrate that we have already made good progress. Uh, now the question is, what would be the consequence and what, we need to, what do we need to change for that? And when we uh, think about uh, what remains to be done, I mean, even though we are proud of the past, and uh, as you said, we, we have been using Cradle to Cradle to really make sure that when we do something, it has a positive effect on one side, but no negative effect on the other side. And that's what we like with Cradle to Cradle. It's really this holistic approach. And uh, so when we look at what we have done, we can be proud. But when we look at what remains to be done, we, we should be really humble. Because what we need to do now is, is really a transformation. So talking about the past and, and sharing the example of Target uh, with you, yeah, I would say uh, if we look at the DNA of the company, the culture of the company, already in 1957, our teams in Sweden were uh, working, developing processes to recycle their waste and make sure that, uh, of course, uh, we use properly the resources that we have. Uh, and, and which means that today, uh, the vast majority of the waste that we have uh, are reused, recycled. So I would say we have closed the loop within our processes, which is the first step. Now, in 2010, in we, uh, I mean, the, the leadership team at that time decided to uh, engage the company with the uh, United Nations Global Compact and United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, which supported, in a way, the, the, the way, the structure we do things. And at that time, uh, it was obvious that we needed to improve the methodology that we use to innovate, uh, to develop product, uh, and again, to make sure that we don't forget something. And that's, at that time, uh, the reason why we tried the cradle-to-cradle concept and uh, I mean, 10 years later, uh, we, we, we can say that we have been using uh, the cradle to cradle methodology. We have been learning a lot. Uh, of course, we have certifi certified product, uh, 20 certified uh, product. Uh, but on top of that, uh, th there are much more. We, we have been able to uh, uh, look at the material that we buy. I mean, more than 5,000 different materials through this cradle to cradle methodology. So which means that we know the impact of each of our raw material on health. We know the impact on uh, greenhouse gas. We know the impact on uh, circularity. And, and this is daily helping our teams to in fact decide, choose product uh, materials that, that are compatible with this uh, transformation that we are talking about. Now, of course, uh, as I said, uh, we, we have a lot to do uh, still uh, because the, the, the ambition is, 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 is big. Uh, and and th this is where also the leadership team is playing a very important role. And you talked about our CEO. Uh, it starts with the head, of course, and then uh, big, big objectives. Uh, and I must say we have objectives for 2030 to increase the recycled content in our material. But we don't know exactly how we are going to achieve that. Yeah. We, we have, of course, uh, very good ideas. We have already roadmaps. But we still have to, uh, to invent many things. But that's, that's part of, uh, of the game. 
And what it's about, uh, like the business models behind it, because actually, yeah, we, when Cradle, when with Cradle to Cradle, we are talking about designing products in a totally different way, and then we are talking about that we are getting them back. And you said, okay, you already closed the loop, but how do you close this loop? And do you, uh, yeah, are you also inventing new business models for your sector as well? Yeah, uh, so wh what we have done concretely is that, as I said, on the first step we was really to uh, do what we control. So which means close the loop in, in, in the waste, in our processes. That's, I would say, done 95%. Uh, the, the second step was to extend. Uh, and what we have done since 2010 is that we have developed, in fact, uh, what we are calling a restart concept where we are helping uh, installers that uh, lay down the floors uh, to uh, bring back uh, the, the cutoff, uh, the waste that they, they generate on site. So we offer big bags and we take care of the logistic uh, so that we bring that back to our recycled, uh, recycling center and then recycle them. So that's the first step. So yes, we, we in a way, we changed uh, also uh, the way we operate with, uh, with our customers. But that's not enough. That's not enough. Uh, as I said, uh, a big part of the floors, in fact, uh, that are installed, are installed in the renovation. So which means that every time you renovate, you remove the old floors. What do we do with that? Today, the majority of these floors is sent to landfill, is sent to incineration, while it is the resources. And that's what we have been uh, working on in the past uh, couple of years, is really to uh, close the loop uh, really in, in a broader way. And we are right now working with, uh, with customers, with partners, in order to bring back also this floor and develop the technology to be able to recycle them. Because of course, we, we, need, we need to remove the glue, we need to remove the concrete, etc. cetera. Uh, that's really a new way to do business and, and we are working with our customers to engage them. And that's the new business model that we are working on. Thank you. Um, Thomas Fuhr at Grohe, you, you just started your cradle to cradle journey, um, not that long ago, like uh, Taket did. And, um, how would you say that you actually are implementing it? Are, can, can someone give back your products to you? Or how are you actually uh, clothing the loop? And what is the, your idea of Cradle to Cradle for the future for Grohe? I think um, what you said before, it's important. It's time to act now. Uh, and we all know this, everybody knows here in this room that's time. And here are four examples which show from different industry that it can be done. So there is basically no excuse that we can't do it. Now, what is hindering us? And for me, one thing I, I got actually this morning uh, came in my head when uh, during an interview somebody asked me, what is your uh, feedback what you get from customers and so on on these products which we just launched the cradle to cradle products and it's actually quite amazing you get a lot of positive comment uh, comments clear uh, but also from a business point of view from where is demand coming and the interesting topic is most of the questions uh, and the best discussions we have with the Netherlands with architects from the Netherlands why because there is a regulation there. Uh, there is a clear uh, target, there are clear regulations, and everybody is consuming it. Uh, we have also discussions in Germany with architects, but this is only starting. So regulation is important to get this, uh, to get this driven. Technically, we can do everything. Uh, this is uh, uh, the, uh, the one point which, uh, which is important from, 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 uh, from my point of view. The other topic which we uh, tried to do, and I think you have also something similar in, in your products, cradle to cradle alone is maybe not the best solution. Uh, maybe you need to add something on top, some icing on the cake, to make the product even more appealing uh, to our customers. 
And uh, what we, for example, did when, when we developed our four products, we said, you know, cradle to cradle is one thing, but what else can I give the customer uh, to make the product even more attractive? So we put some additional energy saving uh, options in these products, which only these products have, and they offer you, besides having a cradle to cradle product, you can save actually energy costs and these products pay back on their own after a couple of years. So, uh, and I think this is something where we all can learn from each other uh, to make these products more attractive for the, co uh, for the consumers because most of the people don't know what, it, what cradle to cradle means. And we need to engage <laughs> basically everybody to, to, to get this pull. Uh, wouldn't, that, wouldn't this mean also to have a totally new business model behind your product and not selling it anymore? Yeah, so th this is the next step. Uh, I, I told our uh, products are luckily uh, already designed that they last a long uh, time and also in customer use they are a long time. Uh, and we are starting now to implement uh, uh, this um, take back models. And we did it, for example, at the moment, we, we started with cons consumables. We have a system, Grow Blue, where you basically get your uh, mineral drinking water, uh, not out, out of a bottle, uh, you get it fresh from, from the tap. And for this, you need plastic filters, which, uh, uh, which we use. And for them, we have already implemented a complete circular model where the filters, after usage, they get back, they get shredded, and the material is once again uh, used for making new products. Uh, also there it's possible. We are not perfect by all means, uh, but step by step uh, uh, we will implement. But this would, would be a great example for totally changing the business model um, and not selling your Gro Blue, for example, anymore, but selling water, sparkling yeah. water, and then actually providing the whole service around it. Yeah, no clear. And this will come. This will come not only with the drinking water, it will come also, we talked this morning, somebody talked about electricity uh, uh, and light, uh, and it will come with water consumption uh, in your house as well. I'm very convinced about it. Talking about water, we are uh, at your special, uh, yeah, your products, um, and you're working on a circular economy, like you said, for a long time now. Um, what would you say is cradle to cradle for your company? Um, by, yeah, there's the circularity aspect, but there are also aspects of um, material health and actually how we are um, looking at these materials that we are using for products and what we are implementing and also uh, having these service aspects in mind, for example. Uh, yeah, what are you doing with this? It's a comprehensive topic. Uh, I think when we got started in 2005, uh, the first point was to win other customers and also to convince our own co-workers that it's good what we are doing, what we are changing. And we always said, if we don't succeed in convincing our own co-workers, how shall we succeed in convincing others like customers? And therefore, we were happy that we succeeded with Hamburg Water uh, as a big water supplier. And uh, one example in Munich, were Brunata Metrona, as one of our big customers, that we sell the meters and at the beginning we get them back. We sell them back. And to keep it easy, we told them, Put everything what you have in one basket, send it back to us, and we pay per kg. And therefore, this product, uh, this process got started. And at the beginning, we just did this with mechanical meters. Then, 2009, we extended this to electronic water meters. And what we learned from this first stage in 2009 is uh, that we have to improve our capacities and competence concerning the remanufacturing. That means the new product which we de developed 2015 was designed for remanufacturing from the very beginning. That is, means in development you not only join mechanics, software and electronics, you also think about production and you think about reproduction, remanufacturing. 
And uh, this also goes in line with new business models. Therefore, today, if I have the choice, my favorite model is product as a service, because then I know the meter is mine. I'm responsible, my people know if we don't manufacture perfect quality, the product will come back. And we don't want products uh, coming back to us which are uh, returned because of a failure. We want uh, them to be returned at the end of life. And then the best model is to reuse them, then to remanufacture them. And only after that we think about recycling. And how easy is it to uh, actually uh, disassemble your product? Um, to, to, to design the product. So to, to, to disassemble it, uh, so put it into different parts again. Yeah, that's a, a very good question because this was an, also an important uh, learning point from the first stage, first product 2009, and then the second product. This was with design for remanufacturing. It means make sure that you don't make yourself more work than you should have because it's already optimized for the reuse and for the remanufacturing. And therefore, we, we have to think in modules uh, so that the easy can be assembled and disassembled. And this is what you learn while you are doing it. And therefore, I only can uh, support what the colleagues said. Uh, they have surely bigger problems because they are big players. We are a small player. But nevertheless, the principles should be the same and after my convincement are the same. We should follow our ideas and we should, should just do it. Never, nobody from us knows at the very beginning what will be the result at the end. But we are entrepreneurs, therefore we have to do it. Yeah, Michael Kara is already wanting to, to say something, uh, actually. No. <laughs> no, because what, what Wilhelm Maus said is right. Um, concerning the remanufacturing, there is a lot, a lot of potential on this one. Yeah? That's one of the fields that we have been doing since quite a while. Um, remanufacturing uh, of, for example, uh, uh, truck clutches or uh, flywheels in a big scale, in a big industrial scale. We have made very good experience with this, winning back 99% of the material and providing a almost completely new product. Yeah, and um, we are scaling. It's even better than the one at the first stage. Yes, from the function, it's the same. Yeah, but uh, the material is reused. And uh, uh, we are scaling this now also in other locations. So we want to scale the remanufacturing. Um, uh, um, what I want to mention, however, if we want to have a really, if we look for the biggest impact, and I'm now talking about our overall carbon footprint, we have analyzed this very closely over the last months. And um, the largest portion of our carbon footprint, apart from the use phase, which we cannot fully influence, is in our supply chain. So um, by partnering up in the supply chain, and we are doing this, for example, at the moment with big steel plants, yeah, and by talking with them about their decarbonization, by making material streams going back to them, yeah, um, uh, we can have a, a huge impact on, on the whole uh, carbon cycle. Yeah? Over 70% of our metal um, emissions comes not from us, uh, from the, the grinding and the assembly and all of this, but from the steel plant. So if we can work with the steel plant, yeah, uh, we can achieve a big effect there. And in order to achieve this, those cycles, that's the third thing I want to mention, that the digitalization is very important. It was already mentioned once, yeah, that it's important that this information flow goes with the product. And um, for us, for example, it's a big challenge because at the end of the life of vehicles, cars, we don't know where they are going. Yeah? But if we, um, we have now one big initiative with uh, big European car manufacturers, it's called Catena X. They are working on a big cloud-based project where we can follow the road of the materials and of the products. And this enables us then to bring the material back to us. Yeah. And in the case of, for example, aluminum housings, we already have most of them with secondary aluminum. And we need to expand this now to scale it to other parts. Yeah. 
Yeah, a lot of materials are already there and we need to reuse them. Um, Absolutely. We are in a in the discussion here on the panel already. Of course, uh, I would like to also get your questions from the audience as well and also from uh, the audience at home. So please uh, just write us our uh, your questions um, or just uh, feel free to uh, ask your questions right after in this panel. You wanted to say something yeah, exactly. as well. Yeah, exactly. I, I would like to take the opportunity of what you just mentioned to maybe share an example uh, of, of really the impact of circular economy on uh, carbon footprint. So if you can reopen the presentation that I prepared, and, and I will share with you um, in a quick example, which sometimes is better than a long speech, uh, just to uh, really um, uh, share with you what, what it means for a, for a floor. Uh, so it's coming. Yes. So here it is. Uh, so what what uh, I guess most of you know is uh, what we're calling the life cycle analysis. So it's really to understand, and this is cradle to cradle. No? It's really the understand the understanding of the different impact of the product all along its life. Uh, so from cradle to cradle. And what uh, is happening right now is that, and that's what we, we, we can see with our customers, most of them are focusing on this part, and that's what we are calling cradle to gate. Um, and, and of course, it's part of, uh, it's, a, it's an important part of the life cycle analysis, but it's not all. And that's important to look at the whole life cycle, because at least I'm t I can talk about uh, floors, but at the end of a life of a floor, Today, most of the time, it goes to incineration. And what does this mean? If we do the uh, greenhouse gas emissions calculation, uh, the carbon footprint, we can see that uh, we have one part which is coming from the cradle to gate. And the majority of uh, these greenhouse gas emissions are coming from, as you said, not directly from us, but from the extraction and the transformation of the raw materials. In this example, eight kilograms per square meter of a floor is coming from these raw materials. And at the end, when it leaves our factory, roughly 10 kilograms. What we should not forget is these four kilograms that will happen, of course, much later, huh, because our products are made to last. But anyway, every day, floors are sent to incineration and at the end of the day, uh, triggers uh, greenhouse gas emissions. With uh, circular economy, What we do, we restart, we recycle, and we bring back the floor uh, into our processes, so which means that we reduce, of course, the virgin raw material. The transformation, the recycling of this material is much less intensive in greenhouse gas emission than the extraction of raw materials. And we avoid the incineration. So which means that at the end of the day, It's, and that's exactly what you said. You, you, you talked about 70%, but here we can see uh, on this example, 65% of the greenhouse gas emission is cancelled with this approach. And I believe this is, this is important to, to understand that circular economy is really powerful, of course, to uh, manage the resources, but also extremely powerful to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions. And when we are we, coming back to your first question, is it possible to achieve? I mean, for a company uh, to, to be aligned with the Paris Agreement, very often it, it's about reducing greenhouse gas emission by 70 to 80%. With this circular economy, we, we make a big, uh, big step. So I would say for me, it's a very positive message. Now, it's not easy to do, of course, and we need partners, we need customers, we need regulation. You talked about that, fully agree in order to force this kind of, uh, of model. Yeah, I think... <laughs> I think this is something that is uh, missing, or sometimes missing, in the discussion of climate change, that industries and actually how we are producing our products are so important for this change, and we cannot only... Um, talk about how we are uh, yeah, using less CO2 in uh, 
driving or uh, flying somewhere and this is the only discussion but actually changing how we are producing our products you wanted to say something to yeah i think this goes in in this line and uh, similar what you, what you also said if i look at my product portfolio so faucets showers uh, 99% of the emission is coming in customer hands. This is basically water usage. We open the tub, the water comes out. Uh, or under the shower, most of the time, usually we use warm water. It's the energy which we spend. And this, uh, so the product itself is actually peanuts. We still need to act on it, but we need actually, my target is actually to make your company uh, uh, going out of order because my idea is to have a house which is totally independent from a water pipe uh, coming in. This is my vision uh, at the end. I don't want to have a water pipe coming into a house and getting a self-sufficient uh, cycle uh, at the end. Faucets are important, but they will be, it's only a part of the, of the service model. And therefore, I think it's really depending on the different businesses we are in, uh, there is not a one-size-fits-all solution, right? Yeah. We have some questions from the audience. Um, there is one uh, going to uh, ZF. Uh, what are other products of ZF are in the pipeline? Um, so what could be the next C2C win? So... Um one, one big challenge for us is um, that we are now going into the electrification. Yeah? And with the electrification, our product portfolio is changing rapidly. We have, for example, much more copper in our parts than we uh, had in the past yeah, due to the electric motors. And um, for us, it's now a matter of product design. We are traditionally going for efficiency, lightweight, and all of these things. But um, we are now um, uh, really much more focused on a, on a CO2-oriented design, which is connected with a cradle-to-cradle -cradle approach. Because if I can take the part, uh, if I can disassemble the part, if I can take out the copper, if it's not molded in, for example, in plastic or other materials so that it needs to be downcycled in some way, but it can be cleanly separated, then um, we can close this loop yeah, if we have the corresponding information flow. So uh, that's a very important subject we are, we are currently working on. And uh, the other one, I mean, it's not directly cradle to cradle uh, related in the, in, the, in the strict sense, but what we try to do is we want to combine our product portfolio with our overall, let's say, production and way of doing business strategy. For example, we are partnering with our big wind customer, Vestas, and with uh, one big provider of uh, uh, offshore wind turbines to uh, equip with our drive lines the Vestas wind turbines who are built uh, then in the Baltic Sea, for example, in this case, and producing then the energy with a direct contract with us that we, we need to use to have the, the original green energy for all our plants. So we try to integrate such concepts of our product, of the way how we purchase, of uh, what we need to do in our climate strategy. We want to bundle those things. Yeah? Thank you very much. Uh, there was a question from the audience uh, in here as well. Yeah, my name is Monika Griefer and I'm the head of the advisory board of Cradle to Cradle. And I want to ask you one question, especially because you just mentioned copper, Mr. Uh, Kara. How realistic you think it is that we can do this electrification? Because uh, copper is a very rare material and um, the outcome um, of the earth is very low at the moment in one hand and the other hand the recycling rate is very low as well it was not uh, it was very small compared to former times because of the amounts in products are so small at the moment so don't you think it's it's very useful also to put in the emphasis on other um, ideas of um, transport, not only electrification, but also having e-fuels and stuff like that. Yeah, um, I, we also think that um, the full focus on battery electric electrification uh, was from our perspective, it mean, we think that this is now a trend that cannot be stopped. Um, uh, however, we have always uh, pleaded to be, let's say, technology open. Yeah, 
Um, and I liked also what I read this morning in the statement that uh, Ursula von der Leyen was giving, where she was also stating that the companies should not only go strictly this way, but they, they, they know best how to decarbonize. Yeah? And um, for example, for us with the hybrid, um, uh, 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 the hybrid drive lines that we do, we want to bridge the gap uh, uh, towards electrification. This, of course, can only uh, be carbon reduced or carbon neutral if we have more biofuels or synfuels. Yeah? Um, uh, we are working on, um, on, uh, um, uh, on um, uh, nitrogen uh, truck drive lines. Um, but it's also a good idea to start with gas trucks now because it's a direct bridging technology again. So I think we should not go into too much black and white thinking, yeah, but uh, uh, to, to look for the smart solution. But there needs to be an accountability because uh, um, uh, we have at the moment no choice. We, want, we need to reach our targets. Yeah? So therefore, we need to be careful that those bridging solutions are not extended. Yeah, like we see it, for example, in the coal industry or something, but uh, that uh, we really have then a reliable time plan. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we, we were talking about new business models and how we are and can implement this. Um, one main factor of uh, yeah, how we are tr having this transformation in the future is also di the di digitalization. Um, this plays a big role in your business as well. Um, and also it makes circularity possible. So um, what can other companies learn from you in this respect? Yeah, I think uh, the future with us clearly are two pillars of our strategy. A circular economy, the older pillar, and uh, in the last years also the digital digitalization. That means, uh, as said before, that uh, the manufacturing is completely in this modern way and the product is in this way. This enables uh, customers to use products which are good for the environment and also to reduce the idea of the product to its function. That means the only idea of our water meters is to measure the water, the volume, and to transfer the data to the customers. And uh, therefore, uh, think about big pipes, think about small pipes, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you want to reduce leakages and you want to detect leakages and therefore, I hope, Thomas, that with this part as one of maybe 10 reasons, uh, we should have uh, also as a company a sustainable future. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, this is a big aspect. We could talk even much more about um, yeah, only this topic already. Um, and we are also uh, running out of time and want to come to our lunch break. But at the end of um, this panel, there's one question. Um, how can we have C2C, uh, how can C2C can become mainstream in different industries? And I would like to uh, close this round with a question to all of you, maybe with a short statement at the end. How can uh, this become mainstream, but even more, maybe you can say, how can a positive agenda for a company become mainstream instead of only uh, yeah, actually working on their efficiency, but actually driving change for effective products and effectiveness? Um, yeah, maybe, would you like to start? was a complex question um, uh, for us, really, um, and, and I do agree with, with the colleagues here on the stage. Um, for us, it's about changing the business model. Um, the strategy that we have is um, we want to provide not transmissions or, uh, I don't know, car components, but our strategy is we want to provide a clean and efficient and affordable mobility. Yeah? And with those mobility solutions, we are not limited to uh, selling a transmission or a electric uh, engine to the car, but um, uh, we, we are working more and more in such, yeah, it's the buzzword, but it's, it's true. We're working more and more in such ecosystems yeah, where we are collaborating more with our customers, with cities, 
Uh, we are, for example, working on electric autonomous uh, city shuttles yeah, um, that will drive on airports. So it goes more into those service models. Yeah. Thank you. Wilhelm Maus. Yeah, I think uh, for me it's clear. I'm convinced that sustainability, cradle to cradle, and all these aspects will be considered as normal. And we just should ask us the question whether we would be able to impress our forefathers, our grandparents with discussions we have today. For those earlier generations, I think it was very normal and therefore we have to learn from the mistakes we have done on Earth and to do it better in the future. Thank you very much, uh, Anor Maki. Yeah, so, of course, I can only agree with what uh, was said. Maybe what I can add on top of that is uh, transparency. I believe it's, of course, up to us to use also cradle to cradle methodology to demonstrate that it's, it's a very good tool to be transparent uh, on what's inside our product. Uh, of course, demonstrate that they are, uh, I would say, compatible with all the, the today's regulation, but also with future regulation. So be proactive and be transparent with our customers sharing this data. And you just talked about uh, digitalization. I believe it's, it's a very good way also to use uh, this uh, digitalization to share uh, the content of our product based on a very structured methodology uh, with cradle to cradle. And, and we see it's happening right now. We see very good feedback from, uh, from our customers. So I'm not worried about cradle to cradle. I know that it will be more and more used in the future. Thank you. Uh, Thomas Fuhr, you, are, you, you work with uh, efficiency a lot, like you just said, because you want uh, that less water is consumed. But with your products uh, and looking at effectiveness, how can a company become effective and po have a pos positive uh, idea of the future? I think this technical part is the easy part. So this will be done. You know, we were able to fly to the moon. We will get this one solved. And, and there are enough examples. So that's easy. I think at the end, we need to get a pull. For this, we need to get education. There are transparency, you called it. I think this is really key that everybody understands it's now urgent. We don't have a planet B. There's no, <laughs> no other option. We need to act, and this is a, and why cradle to cradle can uh, can help us there. Uh, and then we get also scale, which I think everybody can say at the moment. If I look at my cradle to cradle products, they are of course uh, a good bit more expensive uh, than the rest, and we need to get scale in order to uh, to to get this really widely uh, accepted. And to get scale, besides the education and the pull. I really would like to see more from uh, on the regulation side to drive this in the, uh, uh, in the right angle. It, it's a must. And then I think it will be successful. Thank you very much. So uh, we heard about, okay, at the end we need regulations. Maybe we need to go furthermore with uh, the digitalization and we actually have to change. So uh, I think we could talk uh, about this much more and we could have uh, yeah, a lot of discussions about this as well. We will have time for that um, later on during this day. But now, for now, I want to thank all of my panelists here on stage. Uh, thank you very much for uh, coming here and for sharing your experience. I think uh, there's an, an yeah, a lot to do at the end to actually bring these uh, pioneer examples into scaling and actually changing the whole uh, way how we are doing um, our business and how we are actually having our economy. I would now switch to um, German again, but first I would have, uh, yeah, uh, thank you and applause for you. Thank you. Okay.